Hey, hey developers, today we're gonna look at eight ways you can create a Vue.js application here in 2021. So you may not realize that Vue actually has quite a few ways to create an application. In fact, just the other day, I work at AWS and we had to create a Vue app and I was trying to figure out like, which way should I do it? Should I use Vue CLI? Should I use a CDN script tag? And then I realized there is so many different ways to do this. So I thought this would be a great video for people who are, want to create a Vue app, but aren't quite sure what they should use and want to know the pros and cons of each way. Oh yeah, and one other thing, there is a huge Nux conference going on. It's the largest Nux conference. By the way, that is an amazing framework, meta framework you can use with Vue.js. It's 15th and 16th of September, 2021, and it's 100% free, it's online. One thing you may want to understand about it is that Evan Yu will do a live frequently asked questions Q&A. Um, he's gonna be answering questions on Vue.js and also Sebastian Chopin and many other are doing a live QA and they're the creative, basically the creators of Nux.js on what you can expect from Nux and also talk a lot about Nux 3, which will be the new Vue.js 3 version of Nux. So make sure you check it out. I'll put a link in the description. So check out Nux Nation. And also for those of you who are super fans, make sure you watch all the way through the video because I'm gonna be giving away two free copies, Mastering Nuxt course, but I'll tell you a specific way you need to do something to actually get entered in here. So make sure you watch all the way through and you can win a copy of Mastering Nuxt. So let's talk about starting a Vue application in 2021. There's actually several different ways to do it. And so we're gonna talk about each one. The reason this came up is at my company at AWS, we were creating a Vue app and I was trying to figure out what should I use? Should I use Vue CLI? Should I use something that has this static site generation? What should I do? And I just realized there's a lot of different options and a lot of people don't know about these options. So first, uh, why is this an important topic? Because I think if you look at the official documentation, they give you a couple of different ways to start an app using Vue, but there's actually quite a few different ways. And this is an extremely important decision you have to make anytime you create a new application. First, what sort of framework are you gonna use? And I'm guessing since you're watching this video that you've chosen Vue.js, which that's awesome. What happens after you choose the technology and then choose whatever framework or way you're creating the app? So first, it's gonna be really hard to change it in the future. So if you decide to use a framework or a meta framework, like I like to call them, which I'll explain what that term is a little bit later, it's gonna be really difficult to change that in the future. The ecosystem is constantly changing. So something that was good three years ago may not be the best choice today. So it's always good to keep up with these things. Really for the Vue ecosystem, you have to decide, are you going to be looking at Vue 3 or are you gonna stick with Vue 2? Now there are ways to take a Vue 2 app and convert it to Vue 3. And there's actually some really cool plugins like Vue Demi that helps us do that. But we won't get into that. Still important choice if you're looking to support Vue 2 or Vue 3. And I'll talk to you too a little bit about that. So Vue 3 or Vue 2, that is gonna be your probably your first question, your first choice. And then we'll talk about what choices you have. So Vue 3, this is really a high level 500,000 foot look there's definitely a lot of nuances between Vue 3 and Vue 2 I'm not gonna get into. Definitely with Vue 3, you're getting the latest and greatest if you decide to go down this route. So it has like great TypeScript support. Really, if you're using TypeScript, you wanna use Vue 3, don't use Vue 2. It has the composition API. I really like this new feature called Script Setup, which I covered in my previous video. If you haven't checked that out, make sure you do. It's also really speedy. It's 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 a little bit faster than Vue 2. It's 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 a good choice if you're deciding to just jump into the Vue 3, uh, the Vue ecosystem. Cons, not all libraries support it yet. I know Vueify has like a beta version. I know some other things don't completely support Vue 3. If you're searching for different libraries, you might find that a lot of them don't work with Vue 3 yet, even though it's coming around. Even Nuxt, which we'll talk about later, hasn't fully supported Vue 3 yet, but maybe we'll find out soon more about that. And also they're really dropping support for IE 11. So if that is important to you, May want to go, may not want to go with Vue three. Vue two, on the other hand, this it's tried, tested, and true. Uh, it's many, many organizations are using this. You're not going to get those really cool features that you would have for Vue two. So I just want to get that out of the way before we talk about different ways you can start your app. I think the one that I really gravitate towards is using Vite. So Vite. What is Vite? So Vite is a bundler. It, it creates, basically, builds your app for you. It has some really cool features. It uses these ES modules. So it has this really quick instant server start. You can build not just Vue apps with it, but React apps, Svelte apps. 
It has TypeScript support built in, it has JSX support for, for things like React. So it's a really fast development environment. And I see a lot of companies, a lot of new apps are being built using V instead of some of the other technologies that you can use like Vue CLI, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, so this is a really strong way to create a Vue app. I think some cons with it, since it is really new, just trying to get all your different libraries and everything, you might have some issues with that. Maybe some libraries, I don't think you're going to, I haven't run into any, but you might run into some libraries that don't work with Vite, uh, just because the way it uses this ESM modules. So let's talk about kind of the second most popular way, I would say, to create an app nowadays. And this is the one I used forever and I still think is a good option is Vue CLI. So Vue CLI, you get a whole bunch of things. So this is the command line interface. It creates uh, a scaffolding. So it creates the whole app sort of like Vite does, but it has more options. So when you go through, it's going to ask you a few more questions. You just use Webpack. You can add ESLint. You can add post CSS, has Babel. It, has, it asks you a lot of questions. You can use Vue 2 or Vue 3, which by the way, with Vite, you're stuck with Vue 3. With Vue CLI, you could still use Vue 2 or Vue 3. It even has a GUI, which is really awesome when you're just starting out. If you don't want to jump into the command line, you can kind of use this drag and drop interface to create your app. Well, at least to build the scaffolding for it. And you can look at how big the bundle size is. I think this is a solid choice still here in 2021. I know there's been talk about kind of replacing Vue CLI with Vite, or in other words, having Vue CLI build instead of using Webpack, use Vite underneath the hood. I don't know where that's going from, but I still think this is not a bad choice. And a lot of companies that started using Vue from the beginning used Vue CLI. And uh, you, can't, you can't forget that Vue is called the progressive framework, so you can incrementally add it into your website. And one way to do that is you don't even need to use these big tools like Vite or Vue CLI, which kind of scaffold these apps for you and kind of make it really easy to build your apps. But you could just create something like use a script tag in an existing app. You can use NPM and you can even roll your own if you wanted to. You can use your own, like build your own Webpack setup, build your own, I don't know if people use Gulp anymore, use Gulp, whatever you want to do. Use scripts and then build your own Vue app with it and you can get some of those features. Uh, I forgot to mention like single file components are kind of built into something like Vite or Vue CLI. That's where you have a single file. You have one component that has your script tag, has your CSS and just your template all in one file. And those has to be compiled down in certain ways. And that's kind of built in if you're using those other tools. But if you're using something like a CDN, uh, you might run into more issues. So you can progressively add it to your app. It's flexible for rolling your own, but this is really I would say more, if you're building any sort of app that's more than just a few trivial things or if you're trying to add it to an existing app, this is probably not the right way you wanna go. You wanna stick with something more tried and true instead of just a, just a script tag. Although uh, we'll talk about one, one exception to that, which is a new project that Evan Yu announced just a month or two ago, which is pretty cool. There's also, I can't forget ViewPress and VPress. So VPress is like an opinionated, Markdown, I almost call it like a meta framework that is create is really created for documentation sites. So if you wanted to create a quick documentation site and you wanted like all the cool stuff behind Vue, then you can use this. You can use the Vue components in it. Now there's two kind of flavors of this. There's ViewPress, which was kind of the older Vue 2 way of doing this, that you can use it to create static generated documentation. Some people in the React world, I guess in the React equivalent would be like Docusaurus. And you can do it, you can still use it for that. Uh, you can still use it for like a Vue 2 site, but VPress is like the newer one that uses Vue 3, not Vue 2. Doesn't have quite as many features as VuePress. I think they're keeping, they're going to add more and more to it. So it's parity with, v, with VuePress. Um, and so it's kind of a nice way to create documentation. So this would really only be needed to create like a document site. I've heard a couple of people use this as a blog. Uh, it, I think you're gonna run into some issues when you get into some more advanced scenarios though. I did look this internally and I did like it, but I felt like VPress was the future and it didn't quite have everything I needed at this point. So there's one other uh, one. Other one. This is, these are, by the way, are all kind of view sanctioned. This is under the view umbrella created by Evan Yu. And this is Petite View. 
I did a video on this a little while back, but it's basically, it's analogous to Alpine JS or these really small, super small frameworks. It's like five kilobytes. It has the view syntax that you like. So if you like the view directives, if you like the reactivity system that Vue uses, you can use this in an existing app. And it's as simple as adding a script source tag and then just mounting it on your page. So this is a lot lightweight than, you could do this with regular Vue 2 or Vue 3, but you get a much bigger package. Like I think that's like 45K, 50K. But if you want something really small to add to an existing app, like if you're moving from jQuery and you wanna get out of that and you're moving to Vue, this might not be a bad idea to incrementally try something like Petite Vue to start slowly moving things over. And then when you're ready, just scaffold the whole app out and then do it using Vue CLI or Vue Press or something like that. So now outside of the Vue ecosystem, this is still in the Vue ecosystem, but outside of the official Vue, uh, this, there is a Nux.js, which by the way is sponsoring this video, which is awesome. Uh, definitely check out Nux Nation, check out the 100% free conference that you guys can go to. And so Nux.js has a couple of really cool features. It has server-side rendering, has static site generation, has lots of other features that would take me a long time to explain, like it has file system routing, it has data fetching, it even has like, you can even have like server middleware. So this is analogous to Next on the React side. You can do many of those same things in the Nux world. Has markdown support, has like special image support. Right now, as of this recording, it only supports Vue 2. But uh, we're, I think they're really close to releasing the Vue 3 version. And uh, this is the only hesitance where I say I wouldn't recommend Nuxt if you're looking for the latest and greatest in Vue because it doesn't support Vue 3, but I think that's changing very, very soon. So if you guys have made it to this part in the video, thank you so much. I have two free copies of the mastery site, Nuxt Mastery. So if you guys want to get in on that, leave a comment below with the uh, with the text static site generation, uh, those three words static site generation, and tell me why you would want a copy of this course. So I will randomly select two people. So all I have to do is leave a comment. Make sure you also subscribe to the video. I'll make sure uh, subscribe to this channel. That is so Gridsum. Uh, this is something that came along a couple of years ago, and you may want to use Gridsum if you're trying to connect to any headless CMSs. It has a bunch of plugins and modules that make it easy. You can even just grab data from any API, CSV files, JSON, text files, whatever you want. Pre-renders your, your HTML and has kind of GraphQL in the background. So this would be analogous to Gatsby on the React side. Uh, I think this project keeps going strong. I keep on hearing more and more things about it. They're, they're working hard on it. They're adding more features. So this is really cool. Uh, I believe right now they're mostly uh, Vue 2. I don't believe they support Vue 3 at, at this point, but I think they will shortly. Um, but check this out if you're interested in like connecting to this Jamstack type of site. Now you could do the same thing in Nuxt, by the way. They have some similar plugins, but I think Gridsum is, has many more plugins than, than Nuxt. And then there's, we can't forget another way to start it is just using boilerplates. Uh, I made a video on this, but Vitesse uh, is an amazing Vite, opinionated Vite starter template for Vue.js projects. It has a, really, a bunch of really cool plugins that had, does like file-based routing. Uh, it just has a tons of stuff in it, like Markdown, really cool boilerplate. So if you're creating a new Vue app and you want Vue 3, I would highly recommend Vitesse. It's awesome, check it out. Also, so make sure you support the uh, creator of it, uh, Anthony, because he has, uh, you can actually support him. And then also there's a couple other ones I really like. Chris Fritz made the Vue Enterprise boilerplate for Vue 2, but has been upgraded for Vue 3. Uh, I'll try to put links to some of these in, in the description below, but you can also go to Awesome Vue, Vue Awesome, which is a website that has a lot of these listed. So there's probably, there's many more other boilerplates out there, but I think these three are like the biggest in the Vue ecosystem that I've heard a lot about. So what a boilerplate ba based basically is, is it's a repo out there that has all these really cool features that you want. Um, sometimes it's called a starter template too, and you can just clone it and then just kind of from there, just use it and you can delete things you don't want. And you can kind of, that can be your basis rather than having it scaffold out rather than using Vite or Vue CLI and scaffolding out something you don't necessarily need. Or you, I guess in that case, if you use one of those, you would use the options to pick exactly what you want, but maybe doesn't include some really cool features. 
So this is what you may want to use for boilerplates. So it begs the question, like what would I choose uh, in 2020? It really depends, but I would really go with Vite or Nuxt if I was creating a view app. Once Nuxt comes out with, with Nuxt 3, which I think should be really, really soon, uh, I don't know exactly when, but then I will say that would probably be the best bet, especially if you're looking for something that has static site generation or server-side rendering. Now, those, top, those kind of topics are really meant for people who are creating big apps and you really care about the user experience and you want super quick times for the page to load, you may want to look at static site generation or server-side rendering. But there's also just a lot of other cool stuff with Nux. Vite, I just really like how fast it is and how quick it is to load. And I like the build tools and they work amazingly well. So I think both of those are great choices. In fact, at, at AWS, I chose Vite to use for my build system and uh, yeah, it works great. So leave a comment below what you think. Uh, make sure if you uh, go back to the middle of the video, I told you what you need to do if you wanna win that, that course. And also thank you as always for checking this out. And maybe I missed a way to create a view app. Leave a comment there too. Thanks.